And uh, currently, the country is exporting coal to about 14 countries, both in the region and internationally. And about 3 million tons are being extracted annually. And on site, they've got about 250 million tons, uh, sorry, 250,000 tons, which are stockpiled. 250,000 tons which are stockpiled. So, we got interested in Wangi Colliery mainly because of the debate that is ongoing in the world about climate change and how fossil fuels are contributing to global warming, ozone depletion, um, mainly through the emission of these uh, greenhouses. So, when we entered Wangate, first we looked at social impacts. Uh, which uh, O'Brien has briefly alluded to. And we realized that the Wangi community is actually living in a land of fire. Underground fires which are never extinguished. The fires have been raging for years. And we went into the villages and uh, we were doing the snowball method, where one person leads you to another, to another. Until we got to this family, where there's a young man whose limbs were bent and is now permanently disabled. And we spoke to the mother, uh, you see the pictures are in this report, in both reports and we put pictures of that young man. And the mother said they were in a field and there are some cows which were passing by. So they asked that young man to go and chase the cows away. And as the guy was running with his little brother, he just screamed once. Then they didn't hear from him. Then later on, the other lady said, the boy screamed, but we, we have not seen him coming back. Can we go and check? So they went to investigate. And they found the guy was now he had been pulled out. But what had happened is, as he was running after the cows, the ground just gave in. And he found himself burning in underground coal. And he had, I don't know what we can say, 100 degree burns, but the whole body was burnt. And the Wangi Collier has refused to compensate the family. The guy was in hospital for some days, but you can see that he did not fully recover uh, from that disaster. And we fear that uh, the animals may also be uh, getting into the same problem. It's only that they cannot come and report that this is what happened to me, but it's actually an ecological disaster that is unfolding in Wangi. Um, the other problem, that you feel when you enter one game, even before you do any scientific investigation, the air quality is bad, is toxic. You can hardly breathe when you get into one game. So our findings is also that um, the Zimbabwe Power Company um, is emitting a, a tons of toxic gases into the air day and night. Apart from that, there are also mine dumps which have been burning for many years. Even now that we have had plenty of rains, the dumps are still burning. That fire cannot just be extinguished like that. It continues going on. So, Then we also looked at uh, surface and uh, groundwater pollution. Um, the mining activities are severely disturbing uh, the, the hydrological cycle in, in Wangi Collier. And from interviews we did with the elderly people, they feel that from the time the Zimbabwe Power Company set up its plant, Rainfall patterns have been very erratic in the area. 
they've experienced severe rainfall shortages, which they attribute uh, to the emissions. Um, open cast mining uh, by now it is functional, a WMK mine. It affected groundwater reserves through underground contaminations. That's the research we, we did. The mine has since stopped operating, but it has left behind a trail of contaminated water sources uh, as shown in the diagrams. You can actually see that the color of the water has changed because of the, of the, of the coal mining activities in the area. Um, yeah, uh, one of the rivers, it's a, it's a mighty river, it's called the Deca River. Uh, this river has been greatly affected. The clearing of naturally occurring vegetation, uh, the leveling of land, creation of hard surfaces, and the creation of compacted surfaces uh, to make way for the development of Chilota and the Wangay Colliery mines, uh, generated changes to the environment which caused the alteration of normal drainage patterns. Vehicular movements and maintenance uh, created the potential for substances such as oils and lubricants to leak into the surrounding environment. So one of the impacts uh, that we saw, there is a place where there is uh, this acid mud um, which has been left out. It was a dump site for the toxic waste, but when it's drying up, it's leaving this acid mud exposed. Now, we saw women going to collect that acid mud. And we asked it, what is it for? And we were told that they, they use that, they believe it is a, it's a sexual word, uh, stimulant. It's an opportunity, yeah. Something like that. <laughs> Now, however, uh, it appears this um, chemical can actually lead to cervical cancer. And there is a need for the mining companies in Wange to professionally dispose of this acid so that the people are not uh, exposed to danger. So, we also saw that because of the underground fires, the vegetation in Wange is fast disappearing. If you go through some of the areas inside and around the, the mine compounds, you would think there was a fire that ravaged the forest. But the truth is, it's not there is a fire that happened there. It's the heat that is coming from the underground fires, which is actually burning vast tracts of forest uh, around Wangi. And we don't really know what is going to happen if these fires are not contained. Then there is also the depression that is taking place after the coal has been extracted. The surface is being alterated. There are some unnatural depressions that have developed in Wange as a result of underground mining. Um, so there is a need for rehabilitation of disused mines. There is need to green the free surfaces which are no longer being used. Unfortunately, Wange Collier does not have a rehabilitation plan, even in areas which they are no longer using. Even the now defunct WMK mine, they just left the open pits. They never reclaimed the land which they used. We tried to find out from the Environmental Management Agency why these companies are being allowed to open the ground and just leave it open and move to another mine before they close where they've used and they cited politics. There are a lot of powerful vested interests in the mining companies in Wange 
which is making regulation extremely difficult. Um, then there is solid waste overburden of organic material and soil that overlie a mineral deposit, um, like at a place like Chigota, WMK, and Macomo Mines. Overburden generation is denoted by stripping ratio, which is the ratio of overburden that needs to be removed to the amount of all uh, removed. So there is need to treat this as a bit scientific. Unfortunately, the guys are not here uh, who, who can explain a little bit better on the overburden. But having done this report, we send it to Wange Colliery for a response. We did not want to publish this report before we get the feedback from Wange Colliery, whether what we investigated is correct or not. We sent the report end of 2016 to Wange Colliery. There was no reply. We followed up in January. There was no reply. Initially, we wanted to publish the report on the 26th of January. Again, we called them. They said, send it by email. We sent by email, send it again, we send it again. Then there was no response until we have come to this point. Having said that, we believe they have so much to hide. There is corruption that is massive at Wange, which I think most of you are aware of. Workers have gone for over 26 months without pay. Um, we asked some of the workers, how are you surviving without salary? And they said, we are surviving by stealing. They were very clear. They did not hide. So we said, what are you stealing since the company is running at a loss? Then they said, we steal anything that can be stolen from ballpoints, bond paper, Cups, you know, whatever that can be stolen, we, we are taking it away uh, for, for, for sale. So we saw a very demoralized, uh, also saw disused um, equipment, like the conveyor belts, they are no longer working, they are now dysfunctional. And I believe this is why Wange Kohler did not even want to respond to the questions, because um, it's just a disaster that is at one at the moment because of corruption. So we move to our recommendations or the main recommendation that we have. Now, there is a global campaign against the coal because people feel that coal power <coughs> generation is grossly affecting the quality of air that we are breathing. And it's even more severe to the communities which are around the coal generating uh, plants. And whilst for us we can go and switch on and off electricity, but there's something, a controversy that we saw, that the villages around Wange Colliery, they don't have electricity. There is the Matumabise villages one, two, and three, uh, ironically, they are situated on the western part of the, of the thermal power station. And the air is blown to those villages uncontrollably and without restraint, continuously. In order to generate power for me who lives in Arari and Mutari. But the people who are inhaling that carbon, they don't have electricity. And we saw that as a great travesty of justice. The women also complained that when they wash their laundry and they put it on the line, after about 30 minutes, they need to redo the laundry because the clothes are now black because of the emissions which are being blown their direction. So one suggestion which is being made globally is about clean coal technologies. But clean coal technology is a very expensive technology. Um, where when we look at the current 
situation in Zimbabwe, we don't think the country has got the resources to invest in clean coal technology. And of course, as CNRG, our position is that we lie in the tropics. We have massive solar. It's a great opportunity. Even countries which are in the north, which are not as blessed with sunshine as we do, are actually harvesting more solar than us who lie in the tropics. And unfortunately, the solar tenders in Zimbabwe, instead of being given to reputable companies, are being given to the weak nerves of this world, who receive hundreds of millions, but there is nothing tangible that can be seen. So we can say Zimbabwe for now is stuck in the dirty coal uh, cycle for the foreseeable future. But the desirable thing is for our country to start moving towards either clean coal or solar energy. It is cleaner, it can actually be cheaper as well. Uh, those are my remarks and uh, we will take For these and other stories, visit our website www.263chat.com Follow us on Twitter at 263chat and like our Facebook page 263chat